On April 28, 1955, 14 year old Stephanie Bryan was returning home from school, taking the path by way of the Claremont Hotel parking lot in the neighborhood of Berkeley Heights. However, on this day she vanished. The story of her disappearance is shocking and heartbreaking. Stephanie often walked with her friend, Mary Ann Stewart, as she would on the afternoon of April 28. Stephanie and Mary would often stop at Dutch Girl Donuts for a quick snack. The girls would then head up Ashby Street to the Claremont Hotel, where Mary Ann had lessons at the adjacent tennis courts. She waved goodbye to Stephanie, and watched her walk up the Claremont driveway in the direction of her usual shortcut, a flight of steep steps, that led to the parking lot up to Alvarado Road, where she lived. However, somewhere along this road, Stephanie vanished. At 4.15 Stephanie's mother, Mary, called the school, and the homes of her girlfriends. Everyone saw her leave school, and walk home, as always. Mary called her husband, who rushed home, and then they called the police. The Berkeley police searched the area until nightfall. They resumed their search the following morning. However, nothing was found. There was a break in the case when on May 1st one of Stephanie's textbooks was found on the side of Franklin Canyon Road near Martinez, approximately 25 miles from Stephanie's home. 100 searchers combed the area, no trace of Stephanie was found. It was reported that several witnesses recall a girl struggling in the back of a grey Pontiac near Toll Road. The day Stephanie disappeared, one witness said she was screaming and yelling in the back seat while a man was hitting her. However, no credible information was obtained. On July 1st of that year police received a call from Georgia Abbott, she informed the police she found several items in her basement. One being a red purse, which contained an ID card belonging to Stephanie Bryan. Georgia remembered the missing girl's name was Stephanie. She immediately called police. Police questioned Mrs. Abbott regarding the missing girl's belongings. She was very cooperative. However, her 27-year-old husband, Burton seemed unfazed. He sat silently on the couch working on a crossword puzzle. Police found this very suspicious. Due to the fact that this was the most well-publicized missing person case in the Bay Area's history. Police began digging in the partially finished basement with half of the floor being sand. They soon found a grisly trove, Stephanie's bra, glasses, school notebooks, and two library books. When confronted, Abbott suggested they were planted there by a stranger. The house was used as a polling place a few months prior. Police were skeptical, though, as only the garage was open for voters. When asked where he was on April 28, Abbott gave the first version of a story that would change repeatedly over the next year. He said he left his home at 11 a.m. to drive up to the family cabin in Trinity County. He stopped first in Sacramento before continuing on to Wildwood by the evening. He said he drove a grey Pontiac sedan at the time. He traded it in shortly after the trip. Abbott seemed a most unlikely suspect. He was thin and weedy, his chest a little caved in from a bout of tuberculosis so severe he had to live for a time at the Livermore Veterans Hospital. There, he'd met his wife. They had a four-year-old son. I know it was impossible for my husband to do this, Georgia confidently told the journalists gathered at their door that night. Two days later, the examiner reporters arrived at the Abbott's Wildwood cabin. In 1940, a miner named Lloyd Snyder had staked the 20-acre claim with Georgia's father. But by 1951, things had gone south for Snyder. One night, he got into an argument with a friend and shot the man dead. In that cabin, Snyder sawed the body into pieces, put them in gunny sacks and buried them on the property. Four days before he was sent to San Quentin, Snyder transferred the deed to George's brother. 
Treading on ground that had once held the remains of a murder victim, the examiner newsman sought another. At sunset, they came upon the worst scene of their lives. The dogs were sniffing around a leg sticking out of the ground, the foot still clad in a small, white saddle shoe. It was a nightmare scene I'll never forget, Montgomery wrote a few days later for the paper. They hurried back to town to call first for the police and then to their editors, who were about to run the scoop of the century. Another examiner reporter rushed to Abbott's home to tell him of the find. His previous calm evaporated, and he started to cry. I don't know how the body got there, he wept. I don't know anything about it. I'm still staying with my story.